Father William Bennett is the pastor of St. Nicholas of Mina Orthodox Church in New York City. He serves as the OCF Northeast Regional Spiritual Advisor. Father William is a graduate of Christ the Savior Seminary and was ordained to the Holy Priesthood in 2015. Thank you, Father William. Thank you so much. I gave it away. We're going to be baking bread today. Who here has ever baked prosperate, either at home or at church? Or Okay, good. We've got experience spread out all over the place. If it's your first time, don't worry. We're doing this step by step, okay? Now, before we begin our mixing, we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen, because this will be a gift to our Lord. What you're going to do is you're going to pour the warm water in the pitcher, okay? And then I'm going to come around with a teaspoon of yeast, okay? Now, who knows what yeast is? It releases CO2. Not just CO2. What's it making? Alcohol. <laughs> yeast converts sugar into alcohol and gas. Yeast, for the most basic term, is a fungus. You're going to stir this fungus into your water. Use your fork, please. And what we are doing is we are waking up the yeast. Go ahead, wake up the yeast. Stir it in the warm water with your fork. Not only that, you're going to add a pinch of the pile of flour I have been putting on your table. I'm bringing you guys your flour now. This is food for the yeast. You've got to wake it up. you got to give it a little breakfast. Now, ideally, we would be praying throughout the whole process from beginning to end, okay? Just for today's purposes, we're going to say the Jesus Prayer together just during the kneading process. Who knows what the Jesus Prayer is? Who can, who can say the Jesus Prayer for me? Maria, go ahead. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Beautifully. You've said it before. That's the one. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And it's meant to be used over and over and over again in prayer. We will use it for the kneading part of the process. Now we're going to let, once your uh, mixture is all stirred in, good, let it sit just for a few minutes. you got to let it wake up. you got to let it have its breakfast. And then we'll begin adding in more of the flour on the process. Now, I talked about the yeast a little bit, right? In the Old Testament, were they using yeast, yes or no? No. no. Why not? Who knows why not? Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. Because it was faster. Because what? It was faster. Because it was faster. Why do we care that it was faster? Because they were leaving where? Egypt. Egypt. Very good. For the feast of? Passover, very good. This is where we're going to start, talking about Passover. What happened at Passover? To begin that, that, that commemoration of Passover, what happened in Egypt the angel of death on Passover? Hmm? The angel of death passed the, over? The angel of death passed over. Who, how did uh, the angel of death know who to pass over? Because of the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb, right. God told Moses to tell the people to... Paint the blood of a lamb. Just a basic lamb, a regular lamb? What kind of lamb? Spotless. spotless. An unblemished, spotless lamb. Take a spotless, unblemished lamb and take the blood of it and paint it over your door frame. And, and was it just the Jews who had to do this? Could anybody do this? Yeah. The answer is yes, actually. Yes, anybody could do this. It was the Hebrews who had the faith to do it, and some of the Egyptians did it as well. Uh, and death passed over them as well. And that's how God, uh, death knew to pass over their door. Now, what were they doing inside at the time? You just sit in your bed and hope. What were they doing? They were eating. They were eating. They were told to make an unleavened bread, the bread of haste, because this night you are going to leave Egypt. You're going to be kicked out so fast, Egypt is going to spit you out. You have no time to prepare this wonderful feast and celebration. You don't have time for this. That word, Passover, right, it has a translation in the Hebrew, Pesach. What is it in Greek? Pascha. Pascha. Pascha means Passover. Why do we observe it the same, why do we give it the same name? Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death. Death is not only Passover, it is defeated. Death is defeated, it is trampled. And this is our observance of Passover, that Christ is the Passover lamb whose blood was given for us, that death is defeated. And now we celebrate not with an unleavened bread, but because of the resurrection, it rises. We give it leaven. We give it a yeast. It rises in commemoration of our Lord's resurrection. 
Okay, your yeast is waking up. It's had its breakfast. You're going to begin adding clumps of flour and stirring. Clumps of flour and stirring. Clump of flour, stir some more. Mix it up. When it starts getting solid, you're going to turn it out onto the flour surface. Okay, you're going to start kneading your dough. You're going to start kneading your dough. And as you're kneading your dough, you're pressing on it, you're mixing in the flour, you're, you're pushing it, you're pulling it when it gets firmer, okay? And as we're doing it, we're all going to say the Jesus prayer together. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Okay, you guys are done meeting. Well done, well done. What's the last day of creation in Genesis? What happens then? The Lord rests. Let him rest. We're done with the Lord for a little bit. Let it rest. And part of that resting process is the gluten. All right, letting the gluten come out. The gluten, right, is a protein inside of the flour that allows it to bind. It's that elasticity that it makes it stick together. It makes it stick together. When you're kneading it, you're pushing, you're pulling it, you're working out that gluten, right? But just as equally important is the resting process, okay? Now think about your life. Throughout your life, you're going through a kneading process, or God is working on you. Right? And you feel like you're getting pushed, you feel like you're getting pulled, right? But make sure that in your life, it's a nice reminder to have balance. It's equally important not just to work out your faith, but to have peace in the Lord and have your rest in the Lord. Equally important. And think about your life. Do you have time when you do that? Do you have time where you not only are working for the church, but you're resting in the presence of the Lord? There's a beautiful story of a man who goes to a church and he comes... Every day, every day, he sits in the pew and he just sits there and he looks forward at the church. And he says nothing, he does nothing. The priest sees him over and over and over again. Finally, one day he says, just as he's leaving, you, you come every day, what are you doing? Why do you come? He says, oh, well, I don't say anything. I don't do it. I, I look on the Lord, he looks at me, and we're happy together. We're happy together. It's a nice reminder to not only work towards the Lord, but to have your rest in the Lord rest in the Lord. So we're going to let it rest just for a few minutes. Okay, let it sit. Let the yeast eat. Let it work. Let the gluten work its way out of the flour before we begin dividing it up into smaller little uh, uh, prosphoriques, little prosphoras. And what we're going to do with those prosphoras when they're all done and stamped and poked uh, is that we're going to bake them and they will be offered in the liturgy as little commemoration loaves. The liturgy that we're going to have together on Thursday. We're going to use the bread that you make the bread that you make. Thank God, because nothing could ever be good enough. Really. Thank, thank God he tells us you can offer bread and wine. Otherwise, what, would we, what could we possibly come up with that would be good enough for the Lord? He tells us what to offer him. Not just bread and wine, but that you make the offerings and that you offer yourselves. What are the words that the priest or deacon, uh, the, the priest says, the deacon may lift it, but the priest says when he lifts up the chalice and the discos. Yes? On behalf, of, on behalf of all and for all. On behalf of all and for all, that's right. And even before the liturgy, when we are, when the priest is preparing uh, the bread and the wine and pouring into the chalice, and after that's all done, 
part of the final prayers are prayers for those who have offered these, for those who have brought these gifts to be offered to you, okay? So maybe for the first time ever, you're going to be involved in that prayer. You have made this as an offering to the Lord. We're going to use this in the Holy Liturgy on Thursday. Okay, I think it's rested long enough. Go ahead and begin dividing it into eight pieces. So half, half, and half. Everybody should have a stamp at their table, a prosporta seal. Okay, you're going to use, if you have one of the large seals, you're going to use the small side, the back side. Yep. You're going to take that and position it on top of each ball of dough, and you're going to apply pressure to it. Like this. And you're going to press it. Um, but real quick, also, make sure you have a little layer of flour on your dough ball, okay, so it doesn't stick. That's going to keep the stamp from sticking. Cover it with just a light coating of flour, and then go ahead and stamp it with the seal. Who knows what the seal means? What does it say? Jesus Christ conquers. Jesus Christos Nikah. Let me tell you a little history lesson about uh, bakeries in ancient Rome and other areas as well. Bakeries did not necessarily carry all of the supplies for baking. They were baking for households. A household would go to a bakery with their ingredients, with the flour, with the yeast. And there they would mix it together and put it in the oven. But the way in which people knew which loaves were theirs was they had a family seal that they also gave to the baker to seal the bread. So you looked for the bread with your family seal on it. So whose bread is this? Jesus, Jesus Christ. That's right. That's where that comes from. Okay, once you've sealed them all, going to pierce them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Taking the gospel to the four corners of the world. This also prevents air bubbles from forming up the side of it. You'll find theology and practicality in a lot of our process. <laughs> Before everybody goes, on your way out the door, there's a Crossporta recipe card. Everybody take one home with you, and you can make it for your church uh, at home. Thank you. Thank you. You guys did a great job today.